Hello fellow history fans and welcome back to today's video where we'll be looking at a brief history of the Kushtium disaster. The discovery of atomic power led to many environmental incidents over the last century. For example, Windscale, Enrico Fermi 1, Three Mile Island and Chernobyl to name a few. However, there was one event before all of them and it became to be known as the Kushtium disaster and ranks as the third worst nuclear disaster in human history. Any type of nuclear incident always sends a chill down my spine. Something about radiation being the invisible killer. But it's probably because I've seen too many of those protect and survive videos from the 1970s and 80s. <laughs> The disaster took place on the 29th of September 1957 in Ozyersk, Chelyabinsk Oblast, a secret city next to Mayak, a plutonium production site in the USR. However, at the time the place was codenamed City 40. For some context, 1957 was right at one of the hottest parts of the Cold War, when both the East and West were building up their formidable nuclear arsenals. The Mayak facility was built just after World War II in preparation for the USSR's first nuclear weapons test in 1949. Due to the infancy of the nuclear program, much of the facility was built in a hurry, with not much thought for the potential environmental impact in producing nuclear material. This lack of knowledge meant raw nuclear waste was dumped in a nearby river. The original six reactors used an open cycle cooling system, using a discharging water from Lake Kaziltash. Unsurprisingly, when the lake became heavily contaminated, another lake, Lake Karachi, was used, which in turn made it the most polluted place on Earth. Needless to say, the initial work at the facility didn't do much for the local ecosystem. In the years between 1949 and 1952, several breakouts of radiation sickness happened in villages downstream from the facility. Even though Mayak was a state secret, many in the area knew that dangerous materials were being produced on the site. In 1953, a separate cooling system was installed using specially built metal water containers for the radioactive liquid nuclear waste. Even though the risk of a chain reaction was low, the waste could heat itself via decay heat and thus needed a monitoring system for the water cooling tanks. Due to the need for more nuclear material, much maintenance was neglected on the inadequate monitoring systems. To be fair, at the time, knowledge of the full risk of nuclear waste was pretty slim because of its safety often took second stage to productivity, resulting in my ex 17,245 workers receiving overdose levels of radiation. In 1957, one of the tanks which held around 80 tonnes of nuclear waste failed and was subsequently not repaired. Due to this, on the 29th of September, the temperature rose to 350 degrees Celsius, causing an explosion of a force of around 100 tonnes of TNT. Throwing a concrete lid of 150 tonnes, as well as 20 million curries of radiation into the air. Radioactive material, mainly cesium-137 and strontium-90, was scattered in the wind northeast across an area of 20,000 square kilometres. Due to the Mayak facility being a state secret, none of the local residents were informed of the dangerous radiation levels that lurked around them. A week after the incident, evacuations began to be made from at least 22 local villages. However, only around 11,000 people were evacuated in total, and the whole process took around two years to complete. Many of the remaining residents were tasked in the clean-up program by burning crops and contaminated livestock. However, the reasons for the clean-up was not disclosed to the residents. Within days of the explosion, many people in nearby villages had died of radiation sickness. It wasn't until the 17th of March 1959 that the first details were reported in De Pressa, a Viennese newspaper. However, vague reports about a radioactive incident had been circulating since mid-1958. Better light was shed on the disaster in the West when in 1976, a publication in New Scientist from biologist and Soviet dissident Dr. Zors Medvedev outlined the full extent of the accident. Even though Medvedev was a reliable source, many scientists in the West failed to believe the extent of the radiation and instead continued to believe that the contamination was due to poor industrial practices. It wasn't until the fall of the Soviet Union that Medvedev's claims were fully believed by Western scientists. It's almost impossible to completely work out how many deaths were linked to the disaster, as radiation's long-term effects on the population is cancer, 
and as we found out in the Atomic Tank video, it's hard to tell what is responsible for causing cancer, as both radiation and naturally occurring conditions are almost identical to one another. Although the villages around the Mayak facility have cancer rates almost five times higher than that of an uncontaminated village. It is unclear how much damage the explosion caused to the environment, as due to the lack of proper waste disposal in the 1940s and 50s, the area had already received dangerous levels of contamination to the ecosystem. The Mayak plant stopped producing weapons grade plutonium in 1987, however the site is still used for reprocessing of nuclear fuel, and Chelyabinsk still remains a close city today. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this week's video, even though the subject matter was sad. Do you have a subject you'd like me to talk about? Leave a comment down below. New videos are up every Thursday and it would be great if you subscribed. I can't thank my patrons enough and all my social media links and sources are in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.